Before that, the astronauts had a final medical examination, a three-hour medical examination, and still the doctors say they see no sign that the astronauts suffered any ill effects from their flight around the moon. The astronauts got a good night's sleep. They went to bed about 9 o'clock here on shipboard. Lovell was the first up. He got up at 5 o'clock. He said he couldn't sleep anymore. The other two, Borman and Anders, slept until about 6 o'clock, and Borman said he slept like a log. Last night they had dinner with the officers, a candlelight dinner, and then a cake cutting ceremony with the enlisted men, and we'll have more about that later. The flight from the deck of the Yorktown to Hawaii will take about two and a half hours in airplanes called COD planes, standing for carrier onboard delivery. Normally they're used to take mail back and forth from the aircraft carrier to the shore and to ferry passengers back and forth from the ship to the shore. When they arrive in Honolulu, it will be the first time they have of a Pong and Inoue, the mayor of Honolulu, a lot of generals, admirals, and other dignitaries. Being that it's Hawaii, they will be draped in the traditional floral lays, and there will be a lot of people at Hickam to greet them. This will be the first of what will certainly be many ceremonies of acclamation and welcome for these latest heroes of the space age. This will be Major Anders, or now Lieutenant Colonel Anders. He was promoted one rank after his flight around the moon and back. This will be his first catapult off the deck of an aircraft carrier. But for a man who has been launched in a rocket and flown around the moon and back, this should hold no fears. Uh, Ron, uh, it might be pointed out here that uh, being catapulted off the deck of an aircraft carrier is a rather uh, vigorous and exciting experience, and uh, Anders is in for that experience a few moments from now. You have to be strapped very tightly into your seat, and uh, the custom is to sit facing the rear of the aircraft. Uh, so that the uh, strain is on the restraining ropes and you're told to uh, brace yourself very tightly, force yourself against the straps that have been buckled across your chest and across your shoulders and around your waist. And uh, the hydraulic catapult hurls the aircraft off the deck of the carrier from a standing start to about uh, 100 miles an hour in approximately a second and a half. It's an experience that has to be uh, undergone to be uh, believed in all, in all its real intensity. And, uh, of course, uh, Colonel Borman and Captain Lovell have done it many times because both have, uh, have seen carriers at first hand before uh, in, their, in their previous space flights. For Anders, the rookie astronaut, who has now uh, gone 147 hours in space, this will be his first catapult off the deck of a carrier, and uh, it will be coming up in about, uh, oh, 14 minutes from now. On the flight deck at the moment, uh, the flight deck crew is preparing the two airplanes to fly off the astronauts, their doctors and uh, space officials. The flight deck crew wears different colored jerseys, and each color designates a special job during the launching and recovery of airplanes. Red, yellow, purple, green, blue, and so forth. And these uh, designate the men who handle fuel, the ones in charge of safety, the ones who pull the blocks out from under the wheels, catapult officers, firefighters, and so forth. And uh, w once it comes time for a plane to be hurled off the deck, it's really like watching some, some great modern ballet with all of these men in their costumes, various colored costumes, running about doing their jobs. And they know their jobs, although people seeing this for the first time wonder uh, how they avoid getting run down by the planes. It seems, uh, it seems like organized confusion, but after you watch it a few times, you realize that everyone knows exactly what he's doing. And it is a very dramatic, uh, dramatic sight, a sight that uh, those of us who watched it before never get tired of looking at. The astronauts uh, told their doctors this morning that they would be happy to get home to see, see their families in Houston. At the uh, brunch with the chief petty officers this morning, uh, Colonel Borman made a short speech, and he said it, uh, 
said the astronauts uh, had spent a wonderful day or day and a half aboard the ship, and they appreciated the hospitality they have received. You know, Ron, uh, one reason why they didn't leave the carrier yesterday, which they could have done, uh, I mean, in view of their physical condition, is that the carrier was simply too far away from Pearl Harbor. Uh, the recovery was made more than a thousand statute miles to the southwest of Pearl Harbor, and there was no plane on the on the carrier at the time that could have safely uh, traversed that distance. So uh, the carrier since then has been traveling at a fairly uh, high speed for a carrier, uh, heading northeast toward Pearl Harbor uh, to a point where it is now safe to launch the COD planes. And the distance to Pearl now, or, or to Hickam Air Force Base, or to Honolulu Airport, which is right next to it, is only uh, 300 miles or so, and they can make that easily in uh, a little bit more than two hours. Captain Fifield had the ship up to about 27 knots yesterday. And uh, right alongside it during this uh, fast run to Hawaii is the communication ship Arlington, which uh, has accompanied the Yorktown all through its cruise uh, in the Pacific waiting for the astronauts to come down. There are only two of these uh, communication ships in the Navy, the Arlington and the Annapolis. Uh, one of them is normally kept on station in Southeast Asia, somewhere near Vietnam at all times. And the Arlington uh, has sailed uh, generally within five or 10 miles of the Yorktown. Right now it's a lot closer than that. The but it's stayed within five or 10 miles. The idea is that uh, this area of the Pacific is far from anything. It's a thousand miles from Hawaii. And uh, to make sure that uh, communications channels could be kept open, the messages were sent from the Yorktown to the Arlington, and the Arlington's own powerful transmitters uh, then sent the messages back to Hawaii or to Houston or to the mainland of the United States. The Yorktown, the, uh, the Arlington is going to come up along the starboard side of the uh, Yorktown, which is on the opposite side of the uh, island superstructure. And the astronauts will stand probably on the quarter deck and will wave to the crew of the Arlington as she comes, uh, as she comes up uh, off the uh, Arlington at a distance of the Arlington at a distance of about 50 yards or so. I started to say that the captain uh, really opened up the Yorktown yesterday and hit about 27 knots, which is equal to 35 miles an hour on land, and it's very close to the top speed of this carrier, which is 30 knots. And he had seven of the eight boilers going. Well, this ship is 25 or 26 years old. It's seen some hard times. And apparently that speed was a bit too much for the old fighting lady, as they call it. And uh, a number of the water pipes sprang leaks last night and this morning. And there is virtually no uh, drinking or bathing water available on the ship right now. And they, a lot of the sailors have been assigned to mopping up the passageways and the rooms which were flooded by the broken pipes. You know, it's almost like a sort of uh, ironic counterpoint, Ron, to the fact that the uh, onboard water pressure system in the spacecraft failed yesterday, two hours before recovery. So now perhaps the Yorktown is uh, trying to do the same thing out of sympathy. The things that have gone wrong, like the uh, water pipe, uh, the, the water system on the spacecraft, were so minor that uh, you could say that the flight was virtually perfect. And uh, only the smallest things went wrong. The, uh, the drinking water system broke down about two hours before the astronauts came back. There was Borman's uh, slight intestinal upset at the beginning, but that cleared up rather quickly. Lovell came back uh, with his eyeballs dried out uh, somewhat by the uh, dry artificial atmosphere in inside the spacecraft. And uh, there, was, uh, there were uh, eye drops uh, prescribed for him by the ship's doctor, but uh, by, by the astronaut's doctor, I should say. But other than that, uh, and these are really minor things, there were no problems with the space plane. Since they came on board, they've had about a total of seven hours physical ex or medical examinations. They had about four hours medical exam yesterday. This morning, they were up early, as you said, Ron, and they went down to uh, sick bay for three hours more. And still, after those seven hours of medical examinations, the word from the show, from the uh, NASA medical team on board, especially uh, in the voice of Dr. Clarence Jernigan, the chief of the uh, medical team, uh, there are really uh, no troubles of any consequence at all. In fact, uh, Dr. Jernigan told us yesterday that he, on the basis of what he has seen up to now, he would make no recommendations for changes in future flights. On the flight deck of the Yorktown, two airplanes on their catapults 
waiting for the uh, astronauts and the doctors and the space officials to get aboard for their flight to Hawaii. During their stay on board, the astronauts have been discharging various social obligations, and uh, perhaps the best known of these is the traditional candlelight dinner in the wardroom. <laughs> 